We have recently been inundated with TV interviews of female converts to Mohammedan Islam who now feel liberated and more respected by their male believers than they were under Christianity. How factual and accurate are their perceptions? Tilth is the cultivation of land tillage, physical condition of soil, especially in relation to its suitability for planting or growing a crop. Most of the verses of the Quran were revealed to Muhammad as a result of incidents, utterances, actions, and or deeds by, from, and unto Muhammad or some of his companions. They are almost invariably in hindsight and after an event. This verse of the Quran also was the result of such an incident as shown below. Sahih al-Bukhari 6.51 narrated by Jabir. Jews used to say, if one has sexual intercourse with his wife from the back, then she will deliver a squint-eyed child. So this verse was revealed. Your wives are a tilth unto you, so go to your tilth when or how you will. 2.223 Sunan of Abu Dawud Hadith 2.159 narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas. Ibn Umar misunderstood the Quranic verse, so come to your tilth however you will. May Allah forgive him. The fact is, that this clan of the Ansar, who were idolaters, lived in the company of the Jews, who were the people of the book. They, the Ansar, accepted their superiority over themselves in respect of knowledge, and they followed most of their actions. The people of the book, i.e. the Jews, used to have intercourse with their women on one side alone, i.e. lying on their backs. This was the most concealing position for the vagina of the women. This clan of the Ansar adopted this practice from them. But this tribe of the Quraysh used to uncover their women completely and seek pleasure with them from in front and behind and laying them on their backs. When the Muhajirun, the immigrants, came to Medina, a man married a woman of the Ansar. He began to do the same kind of action with her, but she disliked it and said to him, we were approached on one side, i.e. lying on the back. This matter of theirs spread widely and it reached the Apostle of Allah, so Allah the Exalted sent down the Quranic verse, Your wives are a tilth to you, so come to your tilth however you will, i.e. from in front, from behind, or lying on the back. But this verse meant the place of the delivery of the child, i.e. the vagina. Al-Baqarah 2.223 Your wives are a tilth unto you, so approach your tilth when or how you will. Until today, the ulama have not agreed on whether or not this verse gave the right to the husband to have anal intercourse with his wife or woman or not. The traditions, as usual, contradict each other by the opposing views giving isnads proving their points all the way to Muhammad. Ladies and gentlemen, humans can enjoy sex by numerous positions, not only two. If having sex from behind is more revealing and hence presumably more enjoyable, then the Ansari women had no reason to complain. The fact that the Ansari women objected to the intercourse must have been because it was not a vaginal act, but an anal one. Al-Bukhari narrated after Ibn Umar that Al-Baqarah 2.223 was revealed on the issue of having anal intercourse with women. Al-Tabaradi narrated in Al-Aswat with a reliable chain of traditions that your women are a tillage for you was only revealed to license anal intercourse. Ibn Abbas narrates that Umar ibn al-Khattab went before the Messenger of Allah and said, Master, I am destroyed. The Messenger of Allah asked, What thing has destroyed you? Umar replied, Last night I had anal sex. The Messenger of Allah did not give a reply to Umar. Then Allah sent down this revelation. Your wives are a tilth unto you, so approach your tilth when or how you will. The words Kabul wa Dabar mean the anus is accepted. These can be found in Asbab al-Nuzul by as suyuti on Surah al-Baqarah 2.223. It beggars belief that Umar was expecting damnation just because he had sex with his wife, penetrating her vagina from behind. What is certain is that with this verse Allah supported the men. They had the right to use the positions that they wanted. Women had no right to protest. They had only to submit to their husband's whims. In any case, this verse excluded women from the debate and by so doing transformed the question which was thus reduced to the following. Do men have the right to have sex with their wives in any manner, time and place? Without a shadow of a doubt, all the hadith simply disregard and degrade the rights of women 
by giving men the right to completely ignore the wishes of their women regarding sexual positions, times, or places. Neither in the Quranic verse above nor in any of the ahadith is the woman's point of view addressed or considered, since according to both, they are inferior to the man and should be treated as a possession just like a domesticated animal. The following hadith is added further confirmation of Muhammad's and his Quran's attitude to women. Sahih Muslim Hadith 1032 narrated by Abu Dahr. The Messenger of Allah said, When any one of you stands for prayer, his prayer would be cut off by the passing of an ass, a woman, or a black dog. I said, O oh Abu Dahr, what feature is there in a black dog which distinguishes it from the red dog and the yellow dog? He said, O oh son of my brother, I asked the Messenger of Allah as you are asking me, and he said, The black dog is a devil. Sahih al-Bukhari Hadith 1.301 narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. Once Allah's Apostle passed by the women and said, O oh women, give alms, as I have seen that the majority of the dwellers of hellfire were you, women. They asked, Why is this so, O oh Allah's Apostle? He replied, You curse frequently and are ungrateful to your husbands. I have not seen anyone more deficient in intelligence and religion than you. A cautious, sensible man could be led astray by some of you. The women asked, O oh Allah's Apostle, what is deficient in our intelligence and religion? He said, Is not the evidence of two women equal to the witness of one man? They replied in the affirmative. He said, This is the deficiency in her intelligence. Isn't it true that a woman can neither pray nor fast during her menses? The women replied in the affirmative. He said, This is the deficiency in her religion. If the women were more astute and less afraid of Muhammad, they would have replied to Muhammad, The reason that the witness of two women is equal to one man and that we are not allowed to pray or fast during our menses are because you told us that Allah ordained this. These were not so before Islam. Sahih al-Bukhari 1.493 narrated by Aisha. The Prophet said, The things which annul prayer were mentioned before me and those were a dog, a donkey and a woman. I said, you have compared us women to donkeys and dogs. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 7.30 narrated by Abdullah bin Umar. Allah's apostle said, bad omen is in the women, the house and the horse. Sahih al-Bukhari 7.33 narrated by Usama bin Zaid. The prophet said, after me, I have not left any affliction more harmful to men than women. Al-Nisa 4.34 Men are the protectors and maintainers of women. The righteous women are devout. As to those women on whose part you fear disloyalty and ill conduct, admonish them, refuse to share their beds, beat them. Ladies and gentlemen, the most illuminating point in this sordid state of affairs is the complete one-sidedness of all the discussions and arguments and the utter lack of logic, morality or justice since all of them are conducted by the Muhammadan males, thus excluding completely and totally ignoring or taking into account the rights of the Muhammadan women, the ones who are being victimized. Muhammad and his Quran show neither respect nor recognition of Muhammadan women as dignified, intelligent and equal human beings to the Muhammadan men. Those European women who are converting to Muhammadan Islam could not have possibly been made aware of the degrading and humiliating verses in the Quran and Hadiths regarding the treatment of females by Muhammad's cult belief system.